What is going on, Transit? We doing good this morning? We doing good? You doing good? That's awesome. Well, hey, my name is Chad. If we haven't had the chance to meet, hi, how are you? It's great to meet you. A uh, little bit about me. I love this place. This place has been a lot to me for a long time. I used to be a student sitting right where you're sitting. So, uh, but no, I, I love Transit. I love Brownsbridge Church. And so it's great to be able to be with y'all uh, this morning. We're kicking off a brand new series uh, called Sticks and Stones. And I think that this could be uh, maybe one of the best series that you've ever listened to, you've ever been a part of in middle school, because what we're talking about uh, for some of you in the room is synonymous with middle school. Uh, and that's gonna be bullying. Over the next few weeks, we're talking about bullying. And so some of you in the room uh, just nudge the person next to you. It's like, huh bully, but uh, don't do that. We're in church. Uh, but then for some of you, you checked out. You said, hey, bullying, that's not something that I deal with. Uh, I, I don't even really know fully like why we're going to be talking about that. Uh, but I guarantee you that every single one of us in the room have dealt with or currently dealing with or will, will deal with this at some point in time. Uh, and so what I want you to do for a second is I want for you to imagine uh, the most stereotypical bully that you've ever imagined in your life. Whenever I imagine this person, I imagine some dude, leather jacket. He's like seven foot 12, uh, just absolutely yoked, toothpick in his mouth, uh, and then like a grease stain on his shirt. Like, and he's just ready to come pummel you. Like, I don't, that's what I imagine whenever I think of a bully. Uh, maybe for you, that's who you imagine, or maybe you don't imagine somebody who's seven foot 12, uh, but you imagine like a three foot one younger sibling that's just like, nah, he, he, he. like that, like that younger sibling for you is the bully. Whether it's somebody that's like, hey, this is the most stereotypical bully on the planet or the, the younger sibling who is terrifying, like Jessica, stop. Uh, I don't know who that is for you, but I remember whenever I saw a bully for the first time, whenever I was watching a movie, and this person, like we can all, uh, like whenever you see this person, it's like, yep, that's a bully. And it comes, and it may like the movie Toy Story. Uh, I'm not talking about the like Toy Story 8 or whatever y'all have. I'm talking about the original, like back Toy Story, whenever there wasn't gonna be a sequel. There is this guy in this movie who is just the definition of evil. Uh, this, this is Sid. Um, if you've never seen Sid, yeah. Sid is bully, bully is Sid. And like, just makes sense. Like Sid just kind of looks mean. Uh, I think in the song, The Grinch, those are termites in his teeth. Like you, you have the skull on the t-shirt. And if you don't know anything about Toy Story or Sid, this is a guy in Toy Story, the toys come to life, they're people and he tortures those toys, bully. But uh, today, whether this is who comes to mind, whether it is like the stereotypical bully or it is somebody that you wouldn't necessarily think of. What I want to do today is I want to talk about it in a sense, maybe that we've never thought about bullying. That the definition that I was given and the definition maybe that we could give you today would broaden the topic and it would mean a lot more than maybe just an interaction at school. But that it would be something that could drastically change your life and your story. But then whenever you hear this definition, it also can impact your faith. And so bullying, uh, we're just going to work with this definition right here. Bullying, repeatedly overusing your influence to gain what you want. And we all can think of somebody who does this, right? Who leverages their popularity or leverages them being really funny or leverages their influence to be able to gain in their personal life. Maybe you could add to the end of this definition at the expense of somebody else saying, hey, I'm gonna put you down in order to lift me up. At your expense, I'm gonna gain. And we can all think of somebody, well, if that is that person, that, that is bullying at its core, that's what it is, is putting somebody else down for your own personal gain by using your influence over and over and over again. And so whenever I read this definition, I was like, hey, bullying is something that everybody in middle school deals with. I wanna know what God has to say about that. And maybe you've never wondered that, but we're, we're gonna open up, whenever we open up scripture, we actually see that a guy by the name of James writes to a bunch of different people, writes to the early church. Church is just like this one saying, hey, whenever you fight, whenever there's any conflict, there's actually something much bigger. And there's something a lot deeper that is going on that, can resonate with us still today. 
And so James is in James chapter four, verse one, uh, and he opens up with this question, a question that, well, you need to ask yourself. He asks this question, what causes fights and quarrels, another word for fight, among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? It's kind of odd. You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. And maybe for you, you got thrown off by the kill part or you don't know what the word covet is. Uh, maybe for you, you replace that with, hey, hey, you desire, but you do not have, so you intimidate. You want, but you do not, do not have, so you manipulate. But there's this moment whenever I'm reading this verse that I'm like, that's really, really interesting. It's, it's this fight, this quarrel, this argument that are had. I don't know about you, but I've had plenty of arguments in my life. But what James is saying is that these arguments, the, these external on the outside battles, well, it means that there's an internal battle that is happening. You see, wherever there is bullying on the outside, there is a battle on the inside. Whenever there is a conflict on the outside, there is something that is going on inside my heart and there is something that is going on inside your heart that is worth paying attention to. Whenever there's conflict on the outside, there's gonna be something battling on the inside. And what does James say is battling? Desires, the things that you want, the things that you do not have these things that they're, they're, they're battling on the inside. Well, what's a way that um, I could share this? I was thinking about this, uh, something that's going on in my life uh, recently. Uh, about four and a half months ago, I became a dad, uh, which is amazing. I, my, my son, his name is Judah, and Judah is the cutest kid in the entire world. I want you to imagine an angel baby, and then he's, he's cuter than that. He, he, is, he, he is the cutest kid in the world. Um, but there are these moments randomly in the day or in the middle of night, or at 4 a.m. last night, and I'm tired right now, that he turns into like a velociraptor, like, ah! Like he screams and will not uh, respectfully be quiet. And he, he just, there's nothing that can calm him down. He is, I love him, the worst at times when he won't be quiet. And you wanna know the thing that happens that makes him scream the loudest is that he's hungry. He's experiencing as a four and a half month old hangry. Now, who in the room, if you're being honest, would say, yep, that's me. I get hangry. I'm very hangry. I'm hangry right now. Uh, that expression, you're not you when you're hungry, eat a Snickers like that is Judah, but he's four months. So no Snickers. But that feeling of, hey, there's something going on in the inside that is affecting the outside. And so you can try all that you want to be able to affect the outside, but really it's the inside that is dealing. Also, whenever I read this verse, honestly, my first thought is that I think about somebody else. Is I think, hey, Susie, she definitely has some battles going on within her because she's really, really mean. Or I think about somebody on my sports team that it's like, hey, they, they, they must be going through some sort of a conflict because, well, they put other people down all the time. But I remember the moment that I read this verse or I read a verse just like it. I was like, man, I need to begin to look at the inside because, well, I have the potential to do these things. I want you to think about who James wrote this letter to. James did not write this letter only to the people who fight others all the time. Like James didn't like put this letter in the mailboxes of all the jerks. Like that's not what happened. He didn't just write this letter to people who would bully. In fact, this very letter was written to every single person that would call themselves a follower of Jesus, somebody that, hey, hey, I'm trying to do good in my life. And he says, well, when you fight, and it's like, wait, I thought this was written to the people who were trying to do good. One of the things that I think that we can take away from this is that James says that we all have the capacity to bully. We all have the capacity to try to get further by stepping on someone's shoulders. We all have the potential to do this. And you might be sitting there going, well, that's not me. I'm not an intimidator. I'm not a manipulator. I'm not a bully. But if we're being honest, every single one of us in the room have the capacity to do that because, well, I have desire. 
I have things that I want and other people have a lot of those things that I want. And so what I wanna do real quick is I want us to take a little quiz. Now, don't worry, this isn't like summative, formative or anything like that. Like we're not, like this is not gonna be on your final grade. Like nobody's gonna be collecting it at the end. Uh, but, it, but it's the am I a bully quiz. Um, and don't worry, we don't have to share the results. You don't have to tell people how much of a bully you are. But what I wanna do is I wanna ask a series of questions. And this is just for you. But internally, on the inside, I want you to answer the question as to whether or not you've ever dealt with that. And this isn't to put a label on anybody, but it's to honestly go to look in the mirror, live action and say, hey, do I struggle with something on the inside that is affecting people on the outside? So I need everybody in the room to close your eyes. And I'm just gonna ask questions. Just close your eyes and just humor me for a minute. And I'm gonna ask some questions and I just want you to think about it and answer yes or no. Am I a bully? Do I ever talk louder than somebody to try to make a point by drowning out their voice? Do I ever stand up fast and move over closer to somebody to intimidate them so that way I can win the argument? Do you ever make a joke at someone else's expense so that way the people around you will think that you're funny even if it hurts somebody around you? Do you ever point out the things about somebody, the way that they're dressed or, or the, the, the sound of their voice or something about them because you know that, well, it's gonna get some traction even if it isn't the nicest thing? Do you find yourself commenting things on people's pages on social media that you would never say to them in person or making other accounts to be able to leave some of those comments so nobody ever finds out? Do you find yourself not inviting somebody to something in order to get back at them or talking bad about them behind their back because they didn't invite you? All right, you guys can look up. I don't know about you, but for many of those, even as I was just reading the questions earlier this morning, I was like, man, those are a lot of the things that I feel. Even as a guy in my 20s, like I, I, those are things that are real for me. And I can only imagine that they're real as a middle schooler. And here's the thing that's true about bullies, whether that's you, whether that's something else, is that many times they're driven by the things that they want, by the things that they desire. But they don't end up getting the things that they ultimately need. You see, bullies often get what they want, but never what they need. Because bullies often want attention. We, whenever we put other people down, often want attention, acceptance, control, appreciation, to be supported, to be safe. And so oftentimes, whenever we feel insecure, we'll make other people feel insecure so we feel more secure. Isn't that right? But at the end of the day, that can satisfy for a moment, but it isn't ultimately what is needed. You see, at the very end of that verse that James writes, it says, hey, you have not because you do not ask God. What he means by that is like, hey, whenever you ask God for something or whenever you ask anybody for anything, you're depending on that person to follow through. And whenever we ask God for things, we ask him to be with us. We ask him to guide us. We're dependent on God to come through to fill the needs in our life. And you see, whenever we look to other people and we put them down for acceptance or control or to feel safe, to feel needed, to feel funny, whatever that is, we're looking to people to satisfy, to fill us in a way that only God can. We're looking to other people to be able to meet a need that only God can meet. Bullies often get what they want, but they never get what they need because what they need, what you need, what I need ultimately is a relationship with our heavenly father. And so as we're leaving and as we're gonna go to small group, we're gonna be talking about this very thing, uh, but I want you guys to think about this right here. This phrase, when I bully someone, it's because I really don't feel accepted. When I bully someone, it's because I really don't feel appreciated. When I bully someone, whenever I try to take control from someone else, it's because I really don't feel in control. Whenever I try to make someone else feel like they're not needed, it's because I need to feel needed. Whenever I try to hog the attention, I wanna hog the, the, the love of people, the adoration of people, it's because I really don't feel loved. Because I don't feel supported. 
Maybe you don't feel safe. Maybe you don't feel trusted. I don't know what that is for you, and I don't know what that is for the people around you, but if you're sitting here in this room and you say, hey, I resonate with some of the things on that screen, the best thing that you can do is not to keep that in the dark, but to talk about that in small group and say, yeah, sometimes I can make jokes that I shouldn't, but it's just because I want somebody to like me. I don't know what that is, but if that's you, let's talk about that. And then if you'd say, hey, that's not necessarily me or it might be me, but, but there's a real bullying situation that's happening at my school, in my small group, with somebody that I know, what I wanna challenge you to do is to bring your small group leaders into that story. Because one of the best things that I love about small group is that our leaders here around the room, they can help you process those things and then also give you next steps. But then also, when you experience bullying in this life, in your story, that we could be empathetic and go, hey, they're not just a jerk, but maybe for them, they're making me feel this way because they have something that's going on at home, because they have something that's going on in their own heart, and you could too. And the hope is, is that in relationship with God for each and every person in this room, whether you buy into this or not, freedom from having to put others down so that way you can be lifted up is available for you. So y'all shoulder up with the person next to you. Let's pray. And then we're going to head on to group. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for transit. Thank you so much for this place, God. Thank you so much that we have a group of people uh, to be able to do this life with, God. And I pray um, for every small group right now that even in small group today, God, that the temptation, the tension to put others down so that way we can get ahead, God, that you would just squash that. Um, that God, that we could be a community that is for each other. And God, for the student that knows that they need to change something in their life, God, that they would seek you first. And God, for the student that has something going on at school, that they would call bullying, God, would you meet them? Would you comfort them? And would you give them the courage to talk to their leader about it? God, we love you and we praise you. And all of transit said, amen. amen. Awesome. We love y'all. Head to group and we will see you next week.